Hi, my name is uh, Stuart Wilde and I'm a neuromuscular therapist, trigger point therapist based uh, just outside of Boston. And I'm here at the Oakworks factory demonstrating on a, a Prolux table that we have four of in our clinic. Um, I have a, a patient who has, uh, is presenting with jaw pain or maybe presenting with jaw pain, frontal headache pain, maxilla pain, uh, pain around the uh, temporomandibular joint and or pain into the ear. I'm going to demonstrate four uh, techniques on four different muscles. Temporalis, the largest muscle of the jaw, which is about the size of the palm of the hand. It's found in the temporal fossa here and has a, a tendon attachment on the um, coronoid process of the mandible. I'm also going to uh, demonstrate on uh, the masseter, the, the master muscle of the jaw. I'm going to demonstrate on the lateral pterygoid found in the notch here between the condyle and the coronoid process. And then I'm going to attempt to get uh, my finger on the medial pterygoid with the only external uh, access here at the angle of the mandible. First off, I'm going to, oh, this table needs to be lowered, so I'm going to just lower it down. First off, I'm going to uh, do a couple of preliminary tests. I just want uh, Katie to open and close her jaw slowly, if I could. I'm just looking for jaw tracking. And then with my fingers, I can feel for asymmetry of the movement of the condyles. And she has early movement on the right side, which may mean that she's a little bound on the left side. So my first uh, part of my four-part sequence is going to be working on temporalis. And I'm going to start with the anterior fibers. And the anterior fibers run in a vertical direction, and then they become more diagonal. And the posterior fibers tend to run in a more uh, horizontal um, direction. So if I'm going to look for a taut band, which is the absolute criteria of uh, a trigger point, I'm going to have to run perpendicular to the fiber direction. And so this is me uh, pushing past and pulling back to see if I can access um, a torque band, and within that torque band, a more dense nodule, a palpable nodule. And then what I'll do is I'll get Katie to also guide me. And if you could get me onto a particularly dense spot, that is uh, more of a trigger point. Now what I'm going to get Katie to do is to clench her jaw, and that will make the muscle contract. And this particular deactivation technique involves a compression and a contraction. It's one that we nickname COCO, con uh, compression with my thumb, contraction, active contraction of the muscle, and that seems to work very well to quickly uh, relieve the trigger point. So the pain, pain referral pattern, the possibilities are that it will fire into the um, incisors and molars, uh, canines and molars uh, of the upper teeth here and mimic upper jaw pain as well into the maxilla, sometimes into the frontal bone. So I can work my way through the uh, anterior fibers here of temporalis and then see how I've changed my direction now. My direction is a little bit more oblique, looking through the middle fibers of temporalis and finding something here that runs into the maxillary sinuses maybe. And so I'll get a little uh, contraction here as well. And so I feel a very strong contraction. It's a very powerful muscle. Good. And then if I'm working on the posterior fibers, these muscles are more lined up to position the jaw rather than to uh, close the jaw. And so what I'll get Katie to do is to deviate a little left and right if she could. And so these ones are for uh, left deviation, left lateral deviation. And I'm searching through here for taut bands. Oh, that's sore. And there we go. That's patient confirmation of a trigger point. And then you can relax a little bit. And once again, a very strong referral pattern into the maxillary sinus area. OK. Next, what I want to do is work on masseter. I'm going to work on the deep masseter first, which is found two finger pads away from the tragus of the ear and I'm going to sit, uh, apply a single finger contact and get Katie to clench once again. And I'm looking for a, a knotted uh, mat of um, the deep head. It's only a small axis, 
small part of it that we can access. And once again, I'll get a clench and then a relaxation. I'm just going to fine tune that to get the more rounded part of the muscle. Good. Clench and relax once again. And that's referring into my ear. So that's a classic referral uh, pattern from deep head of masseter into the ear and into the tem temporomandibular joint itself as well, where if, if she did have that active. And so having worked the deep head of masseter, I'm now going to access some of the anterior fibers of the superficial head of masseter. And so I'll get Katie to clench once again and find out where the anterior fibers are. Good. And then clench and relax once again. And I'm working my way down. And if I find something significantly more rounded within that taut band, dense, palpable uh, knot, I'm going to um, spend a little bit more time there and wait. Some of these um, trigger points take a few minutes to get, or not a few minutes, um, 15 seconds or so, 20 seconds to get their uh, referred pattern fired up. So I'll hang around for that long to get uh, a sense of the um, trigger point environment. And I'm working my way down through that anterior layer until I hit the uh, edge of the man uh, mandible. What I can do now is a little uh, opposing thumb glide technique to help equilibrate the sarcomeres within each of the muscle fibers. Do that on the uh, masseter as well. And then a little pin and stretch technique where Katie will slowly open her jaw and I will drag my fingers in a myofascial glide in the opposite direction, slowly, slowly open. Good, and we'll do that again on the masseter. So the third of the four techniques is to access the uh, lateral pterygoid. And this is the muscle that is found between the condyle here and the coronoid process. And I have to get my finger right into that notch between the condyle and the coronoid process. So I'm going to slide my finger underneath the zygoma and I'm going to get Katie to half open her jaw, if she could, and that notch appears beautifully. My finger slips into it beautifully. And now what I want to get to confirm my position is a little protrusion and retraction. And now the muscle is giving me a sense of its um, contractile ability. I am still not directly on the muscle. The muscle is buried at least 30 millimeters deep under the surface, but I do get uh, a, uh, a good sense of it. And then the final part of the technique, the part number four, is the access on the medial pterygoid. And I'm going to slide my finger in under the uh, angle of the jaw here. And once again, I'll get Katie to clench, if you could, please. Wonderful. I get a great sense of the muscle contracting there. And this is the third of the muscle, the jaw closing muscles. The uh, lateral pterygoid is the only one involved in uh, opening of the jaw. And that's the four techniques of the uh, people presenting with uh, temporomandibular uh, joint dysfunction or ear problems or uh, tinnitus or frontal headaches or sinus type headaches. These, these techniques will work very well for those. So temporalis, masseter, lateral pterygoid, single finger contact, medial pterygoid, single finger contact.